Okay, today is Monday, June the 20th, uh, 2011. It's about, it's almost noon. Uh, it's been three days since I've had my last chemo treatment. And I'm going, this is the day that usually uh, the side effects usually start to kick in. It's usually within like two or three days after the chemo. And that's what I'm going to discuss with you in this, in this video. But before I get to that, um, I'm going to discuss the... Uh, side effects of this treatment, but at first I want to talk to you about the first treatment that I was on, um, which was, uh, treatment didn't have any of the pre-meds, the first one that I was on, that didn't work, and uh, it was more like, a, it was, it looked like, the chemo drug itself looked like orange, like orange Kool-Aid or orange Tang, and <coughs> it was uh, administered, it was put in through an IV, half an hour, and then I was done. Um, and from that one, about three days later, I would feel a little, little tiny bit of fatigue from it, but I felt no nausea, no hair loss, no nothing else, no loss of appetite, nothing. Just a little bit of fatigue, I mean, but tolerable. You could still tolerate, you could still go shopping, do whatever, just felt a little tired. So I was used to that one for up until that one there uh, was all done. The only problem with that chemo that I had was that if it was once it was administered once every three weeks and if for some chance for some reason uh, I got sick I wasn't feeling well so I wasn't able to make my chemo appointment uh, I would have to try to cancel my appointment and reschedule it well seeing that it had been three weeks since my previous treatment by the time the fourth week or even if it was like four and a half weeks um, I would start to cough, I would start to be coughing up blood again. With this cancer that I've got, I don't have lung cancer, but it's in my lungs, the lesions are in my lungs, and when they grow big, they bleed. What happens is my lungs fill up with blood, I suffocate. The same thing as drowning. Um, so, after, I've noticed it a few times, after like four, four or four and a half weeks after my previous treatment, I start to cough up blood again. So, I mean, the chemo is barely doing anything for these lesions that were in my lungs. Um, and uh, so that treatment obviously wasn't working, as you can tell. And uh, I end up last summer uh, almost drowning in my own blood. Then they put me on this new chemo. Well, this new chemo, like, a, like you saw in the, in the last video, uh, consists of pre-meds, um, which don't as far as I know, don't have any side effects other than the third one uh, that they sh that I showed you. It's uh, Benadryl. It's I mean another name for Benadryl. It makes you sleepy. I mean, but it just makes you sleepy for the first couple hours after you after it's been put into you. After that, you wake up again and you're fine. I mean, after you leave chemo and go home, you'll start to be wake you'll start to wake up again. But um, when I first started this treatment, um, I have to admit. It was a very strange, it was very different than the first one. Uh, the side effects I got uh, the first time was severe nausea. I had six days of nothing but a cramp in my stomach. Um, and I, it was very uncomfortable. I never experienced that with the first one. I knew that this is a possibility because this is what happens with chemo, uh, as well as other medications, but I mean, chemo in general. But um, I also noticed Aside from the nausea, six days of nausea, that on my pillow, I started to notice a lot of my hair on the pillow, which didn't happen with the first set, with the first treatment that I was on. So I went, they gave me, I, t I told this to the doctor, he gave me um, anti nausea meds, and I took those, and it, it would only take it, it would take it, cut the nausea by, by about half, but I would still feel nauseous. You know what I mean? So, okay, well, only for the first, like, six days. And this treatment's every two weeks, so, I mean, six days since I've had the treatment. Come the seventh, seventh day or something like this, I start to feel fine. And then a week later, of course, I'm coming for, going to for the, for the next uh, treatment. Um, the second time that I got it, I had nausea uh, for three days instead of six. Same thing, severe cramp in the stomach. Again... Noticing a lot of my hair on the pillow, 
and I start to notice that actually um, when I'm showering it's just coming out of my head and you know at first I mean you don't you're very uncomfortable with that but you know it's all part of the treatment um, and then that after three days I mean again I took I took some of the nausea meds uh, it helped it only took away about half of it and uh, went from there you know what I mean and then it went away but it only lasted three days this time instead of six now the third time that I, I did the treatment I got the nausea for one day but it didn't none of this nausea starts to kick in until about two or three days after the treatment but I only got it for one day but I still continue to have uh, hair loss and my hair start to really thin out uh, thinner than what you've seen it in the previous video um, so as time went by I, I don't know whether or not it was my body adapting to the chemo or what it was but I mean the the, uh, the uh, side effects start to reduce but one side effect that has never gone away is the fatigue usually after about three days I start to feel really tired now this time with this with this drug that I'm on now and <coughs> with this drug that I'm on now the uh, fatigue um, is a lot more intense than when I was the first one I just felt a little fatigue but with this one here I really feel bogged down like I just finished running a marathon and now I'm coming home and I'm just relaxing trying to catch my breath I have no energy to do anything exact same feeling you know what I mean? And yet, I haven't done anything. I've just been sitting on my butt. You know what I mean? But, um, it happens every single time, the exact same thing. Feel, uh, you just have no energy to do anything. I mean, I even have a hard time uh, preparing my meals. Uh, I live alone. Because I don't have the energy to stand there and cook and be on my feet. Um, so, you know, but I still, from time to time, uh, I don't, I'm not getting the hair loss as much. I mean, I've been in this chemo treatment now for 11 months. And uh, just in the very beginning, I have to admit that I had a lot of hair loss. And uh, and um, the, with the, and the nausea. Well, the nausea went away after like my fourth treatment. The fourth time I was having this, I wasn't getting nausea anymore. Still a little bit of hair loss. But I was also getting regrowth happening at the same time. So, I mean, I noticed that my hair was thinning out, but it wasn't, I wasn't going bald. And I've noticed most cancer patients, when they start to get their hair loss, they like to shave their head. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not going around looking like I'm a cancer patient. I want to go and look, go around looking like I'm healthy, I'm fine. And it helps me to, uh, to be able to live with what I've got. Um, don't have people staring at you or anything like this. And I don't want that attention. Um, so I don't shave my head. I mean, I get haircuts. I mean, just regular short haircuts but that's it but I'm not shaving my head to make myself look like a cancer patient and one of the other important things is is when I first started the uh, chemotherapy especially this second one one thing that they did tell me that uh, some of the other patients told me to make sure I do it was to eat and I make sure of that as much as I can even if I've got no energy I will try to do something sometimes though I'm telling you like I can go three, four days without eating just simply because I have no appetite. But I have to force myself to eat. And that's so important when you're uh, having this kind of treatment. Because that's why when you look at cancer patients, they're all frail and thin and everything else. Simply because they're not eating. And again, because they're getting bit, probably because of the nausea and everything else. But no matter what, it's so important to eat. Not just for general health, but, you know, especially when you're going through this kind of this kind of stuff uh, it's more important than at any other time um, but I now I've got I just today I'm not feeling really uh, I haven't seen any hair but <coughs> two weeks ago <coughs> sorry two weeks ago I was noticing a, a few I kept noticing hairs falling down on my skin on my face and I noticed uh, yeah I've got a little bit of hair loss happening again but at the same time, uh, it's not very bad. I'm not noticing it in the shower. I'm not noticing it on my pillow on bed, on the bed. But just uh, I'm feeling it on my face from time to time and on my body. And I know where it's coming from now. I do have hair loss that runs on both sides of my family genetically. So it could be that. You know what I mean? Could also be, uh, it could also probably do with the chemo or a combination of both. I mean, i got to keep open-minded about, about factoring in both the 
both of that. But um, this is uh, the most important thing when you've got this is to uh, stay strong, no matter how bad you're feeling. Um, eat, you know. I live alone, so I mean, I don't have uh, support. I don't have anybody to help me, really. So you know, I have to do all this on my own. But nonetheless, I'm doing it. I'm doing this on my own, and. Simply, this a message is for you guys, is that you guys can do it on your own as well, if necessary. Try not to. It's better if you have other people to help you, and of course, it, may, it simplifies everything. But even if you have nobody, and everybody just turns around and stabs you in the back, you can do it yourself. You can do it all on yourself. You can do it all by yourself. I mean, it's just you have to stay devoted and making sure that you want to get healthy, and you want to get better, and you're not going to let this get to you. So once you, get, once you let it get to you, that's when you start to really get really sick and possibly even die you know in this case here you stay strong be strong find the strength within yourself um, you know and uh, you can do it you can do it I mean even with the, the, the side effects you can live through it I mean it's only going to be for uh, you know like for a week the other one of the other side effects I also get I mean it's just a minor one but um, it doesn't happen right now because of the time of the year, it's, the weather is pretty nice, but even like about a month and a half ago, um, if I've got my window open and I get, after, especially after like the next day or two days after I've had chemo, just one little chill from the wind, just a little, uh, and that's, that's it. I'm going to get sick. Believe it or not, I could stay warm after that chill and be fine and everything else. But just that little uh, was enough to make my body start to produce a cold. And I will start to be sneezing later on that night, runny nose, and the next day I'm just like coughing, runny nose, sneezing, feeling miserable. The only I have all the symptoms of like very typical like a flu, except I have no fever. Um, they, told, they tell me that uh, with this chemo, if my uh, temperature rises above uh, I think it's 40.3 degrees uh, Celsius. I mean, I know 40 degree temperature for anybody isn't good, but if it rises to 40.3, I think it is, I have to be rushed to the hospital because obviously something's wrong with it. Something's gone wrong from the chemo. But other than that, I mean, that's just it. I mean, I've had that, that stupid cold thing happen to me about three or four times just from a little tiny chill. So I've been able to pinpoint it exactly. And uh, it's a little annoying, especially I live here in Canada, and I mean we're only the weather's only warm for about maybe five or six, five months of the year. The rest of the year it's pretty, pretty damn cold. You know what I mean? But um, uh, this is the way. Uh, this is how it all works. You know, I mean this is the way that the uh, side effects are, and. Uh, all you need to do is you need to make sure you eat, you find coping strategies to cope with the, uh, to cope with this, and um, pull yourself through. I mean, it's going to happen each, uh, each and every time. Certain things are going to come up, and you just got to be able to do it on your own. Uh, if you don't have support, I mean, if you have support, it's even better. You know, if you got somebody there, that's that's even better. But when you don't, just, this is to uh, to show you. Here, I'm somebody that doesn't have it, and I'm doing it so can you. I hope this was educational for you. I hope, I hope, uh, I mean, I'm getting a message across. I'm not a teacher, you know what I mean? I'm not a medical student, I'm nothing like this. I'm just your average Joe that's out there trying to teach the public. If you screw up your medications, this is what will happen. This is what could happen, okay? And what you might have to go through. And I don't think any of you really want to have to deal with that. So, I hope you learned something from this. I hope I made my point clear.